Waven is the latest incarnation of Ankama's tactical turn-based MMORPGs, taking place in the world of the Twelve, aka the world of Dofus. It was released rather recently, coming into early access on August 16th on Steam and receiving rather positive reviews. The game also plans to be cross-platform, with mobile devices allowing you to play on mobile on the same account, similar to Albion Online. As we've discussed on the channel in my recent videos on Dofus, Dofus and Wakfu, links to those videos in the description below, and Kama's MMORPG games have a great amount of quality to them. They just typically fly under the radar in today's gaming landscape. I've mentioned in the previous videos that Dofus and Wakfu are great games for fans of tactical turn-based RPGs, but how is Waven shaking up the formula? Does it set itself apart enough from Dofus and Wakfu to stand on its own? Let's find out. The story of Waven takes place in a new generation in the world of the Twelve. A massive flood engulfs the world in water, with only a few islands surviving the cataclysmic event. You play as a new adventurer that fares the seas in the hopes of discovering a new hope for the world. The story basically is its own spin on the Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, or hell, even Mega Man Legends. Much like the other Ankama games, Waven has a beautiful art style to it. All of the character sprites, animations and environments are incredibly colorful and eye-catching. Graphically, it's their first game, at least MMO-wise, that I know of that incorporates some 3D elements to it. The island map screen has the islands shown as 3D blocks, some combat effects have 3D models, and some other environmental effects are also 3D. Many of the games made by Ankama historically were all 2D affairs, so it was kind of a shock to see some things in 3D. The music in Waven is also a bit jarring as well. Some of the ambient tracks like the town theme fit into the normal theme of Ankama games, but then all of a sudden you'll hear lyrics and bits of hip hop and rap. It's so weird, but honestly, I kind of like it because it felt like listening to some long lost Gorillaz album or something. Waven's character creation is a bit different than its older brother and sister. Dofus and Wakfu laid out all of its classes in one long list of choices with vague descriptions on what each class did. Waven, however, simplifies each class choice as well as evolving class choices further with subclasses. The current five classes boil down to healer, warrior, mage, archer, and assassin. If you are an Inkama veteran, you will know that these are Craw, Iop, Sram, Zeller, and Eripsa. Each class class then has five subclasses you can choose from that changes how each class functions in combat via their passive ability. Personally, I like that the game has finally adopted the traditional class names, as a name like Iop's Heart can just confuse potential new players. I do have a few problems with character creation though. First, the quote unquote simplified version menu doesn't show the subclass choices in an effort to make things obviously easier to choose. No shit. This would be fine if you could change your subclass in game, but from what I've seen, you actually can't. Whatever you choose in character creation is what you are stuck with, regardless on if you end up liking it or not. Luckily, you can just create a new character on your account for any subclass you do want to try. Picture it sort of like how Final Fantasy XIV lets you swap classes on the fly. Just remember you have to level it back up from scratch, unfortunately. Also, side note, because the game is in early access, it is worth mentioning that more classes are in development. Hell, even the website shows Sacrier as one of the choices, but obviously in game, it's not there. Once you choose your class and name, you are then thrust into the world of Waven. You may have noticed that there wasn't any customization options for your look before you created your character. Well, we'll get to that in the cash shop portion of the video. 
Yeah. Oh no. Like other Ankama games, you play through a relatively quick tutorial where you were taught the game's combat mechanics. It's pretty much all the same gameplay from Dofus and Wakfu, with some new mechanics, like spells drawing randomly from a deck you set up, rather than being active at all times. All classes can now summon equipable allies, and all spells now have nearly an infinite range. Elements also make a return here with how you customize your character's playstyle. More on that in a bit. Once you complete the tutorial quests, you then make your way to the first quest hub, which is Astrob Island. Here is where you will see the main gameplay of Waven. Each island is basically a quest hub, where you can interact with various NPCs that will give you quests. These quests are just normal combat encounters. Some will have some gimmicks during the fights, but otherwise it's just combat as normal. And that's basically everything Waven has currently. Yeah, no shit. Review over. Okay, but seriously, Waven in its current build only has these quest fights that you can take part in. There isn't any enemies you can fight on the map to grind on. No, it's all through these NPC quests. No crafting, no mini games, just quests, and of course your player owned house, as well as PVP, thankfully. Luckily, combat and customization is probably the best it's ever been in the line of Ankama games within Waven. Besides the normal turn based format we have seen in previous games, Games, Waven has players build a combat deck for their player. Each class can learn and level up various unique spells that define their roles. Each spell also has an associated element or color. Blue is water, orange is fire, purple is air, green is earth, and the yellowish purple spells are ether spells, ether being typically learned from the skill trees. Players can create a deck of 15 specific abilities they choose from, where each turn in battle, you draw from that deck of spells. This creates a huge amount of variety in possibilities when it comes to customization and variety with how you play each hero class. Besides your spell deck, you can also get equipment in the forms of rings, an armband, and a brooch. These items increase various parameters like health or damage, as well as giving small perks. The skill tree is basically replacing the ability points from Dofus and Wakfu. Instead of getting those when you level up, now you gain five skill points that can be spent in your hero skill tree. Here you can increase your attack damage, health points, earn a specific weapon perk at level 15 and 30, and also learn ether spells that are specific to your hero or class. The last items you equip are companions that you can summon in battle. Each companion has different perks and effects when summoned, and you can equip four of them at a time. Summoning them requires you to cast spells of the companion specific element. Once you have enough element points, you can summon that companion to the battlefield to help you fight. The starting companions are unfortunately unfortunately relatively weak when you start, but once you upgrade them enough or get higher rarity companions, you'll find them being a lot more helpful, as well as being able to survive more than just one turn. All of this customization and theory crafting all probably looks and sounds awesome, right? It is until you start looking at how you earn spells and equipment. Unfortunately, some of the character progression is tied to these random loot boxes. Loot boxes that you can basically earn every single fight as long as you are completing the specific challenge during each battle. I don't like this method of progression. The random nature of the loot boxes will have you grinding more than you should have to just to level up spells or get items that will complement your build. Not to mention, I'm sure these loot boxes will be sold in some shape or form in the cash shop. Going back to the game's other features, much like Dofus and Wakfu, there is a player-owned housing system in the form of your own personal island. Here you can decorate your home with furniture, change its theme, change the look of your boat, and really that's about it. Unlike other games, you can't access other features here like an auction house or an item storage. So really the personal island feels incomplete in its current form. PvP, on the other hand, does have a future in this game. PvP is unlocked relatively early in the game as you progress. When you get to the PvP island, you can queue for 1v1 battles where you get ranked and earn prizes. Participating in PvP requires you to build a specific PvP deck. Luckily, PvP mode grants you all the spells for your class from the get-go, kinda like how PvE should. Whoops, did I just say that out loud? PvP has less emphasis on stats and equipment 
moment since things are limited to just your spells and companions. Obviously this is done for better balance and I like that PvP is something you can just jump into relatively easy here. Unfortunately whether it was due to lack of player interest or just the time I was playing, I couldn't get a PvP match to pop and the leaderboards looked rather barren. Hopefully once the game fully releases and maybe gets more content added to PvP like a 3v3 mode, it will see more play. Because the combat and customization has a great foundation for fun PvP in Waven. So what else is there to do? Well, besides grinding to max level, you are also encouraged to grind achievements and quest points. Quest points is how you unlock other islands as well as the cosmetic options for your island and boat. Every island has a list of achievements for you to complete, which rewards you more quest points. The achievements can be simple, such as completing all the quests within an island to doing something specific during those quest fights, like avoiding a status effect enemies can inflict on you. Currently, max level is 50, and endgame is all about getting the best gear from bosses and dungeons. Dungeons work the same way they do in Dofus and Wakfu. Here you embark on a dungeon quest where you will fight several different battles, with some admittedly fun quirks like the comedic writing, or being able to influence some fights by finding allies who will join you in battles. My cobbly goo, my dear little cocktail has escaped again. Huh? You wanna help me? Do ya? I won't say no. This was by far the most fun content to experience in Waven, and it's the most rewarding as well. Dungeons grant the most experience, money, and rewards in general, so don't be afraid to group up with some friends and grind out dungeons over and over again. Speaking of friends, let's talk about the community in Waven. The community is... Uh, well... They'd probably be a chatty bunch if chat wasn't set to being pre-written. Much like kid-friendly MMOs like Toontown, Waven opts in to have a pre-written chat style system where you can't actually type in what you'd like to say. No, you have to choose between pre-made messages. If you see someone you want to talk to, you only get a few responses you can say, at least until you group up with them. Once you are in a party, you can say whatever, but until then, you are forced to use a pre-written message. You get some riveting choices like hello or it's a beautiful day to fight monsters. The best one is obviously I like the wakfu anime and season four will be out soon. Are you I understand why this was implemented as it removes gold spammers and chat spam in general, but it's 2023 guys, just about every other online game out there will let you say what you want. Many of the systems in Waven just make it feel like it's meant to be a mobile game. And well, that's because it's obviously going to be one. The game is in early access for PC, but there is a mobile version in development. Unfortunately, that's probably the biggest thing holding Waven back, however. A lot of the systems and mechanics seen here were obviously built with a mobile market in mind rather than a PC MMORPG market. Hell, I even struggle to call Waven an MMORPG when it's more of just a multiplayer RPG. A lot of the gameplay is centered around quick pick up and play burst sessions rather than anything long term except the grind and loot progression. The game will even try to artificially make your grind longer by having the AI purpose purposefully make you fail a challenge for no reason. I've literally had enemies step on traps nowhere near them for no reason other than to make me fail a challenge so I would get less experience in loot. Mechanics like that can really drag the player experience down, which leads into the last thing to talk about, the cash shop. Waven is fully free to play, so everything can be experienced without spending a dime. That doesn't mean the game doesn't have a lot of things to purchase, however. First is the battle pass pass, which is arguably the most pay-to-win thing the game has currently. The battle pass has both a gold and platinum track, which has to be purchased to unlock. The gold is 7 bucks, while the platinum bundle that comes with gold is 15 Most of the stuff you get from the premium tracks are cosmetics, but there is things like gold and runes that are used for progression that are on those passes. Not a ton of it, but it can be viewed as an extra boost versus those who don't purchase it. The cash shop is strictly all cosmetic items. Things like hero costumes, companion costumes, emotes, animations, and special effects. Certain items in the cash shop are bought with real money, and then others are purchased with gems, which is the cash shop currency. Gems are also earned from the battle pass, so theoretically some
some items can just be earned through gameplay, which I guess is worth mentioning. It's not the worst cash shop I've seen, but as I stated earlier in the video, I would not be surprised if one day you could just straight up buy the loot boxes from the cash shop. I guess only time will tell. In summary, Waven is a relatively decent addition to Ankama's list of online multiplayer games. It does things different enough to stand apart from Dofus and Wakfu with its changes in combat, slight graphical additions, and some other features. Still, I can't help but feel like I'm just playing a mobile game when I'm playing Waven. Let's get to my final thoughts. The Ankama games have always had a beautiful art style, and Waven is no different. The character sprites, animations, environments, they are all very eye-catching. Combat is just as fun here in Waven as it is in Dofus and Wakfu. If you are a fan of tactical turn-based RPGs, you'll be a fan of Waven as well. The game has quite a lot of different classes to play as in the game. More specifically, five heroes per class type, and with future classes coming, I can only assume there will be five per class type in each release, so there is a huge variety of class choices. The game is fully free to play from beginning to end, with obviously more content to experience coming soon. Lastly, with how the game is structured, having more compact areas and maps compared to Dofus and Wakfu, Waven has a very easy to pick up and play gameplay loop. This is probably due to the fact that the game will have crossplay with mobile. Not everyone wants to have to dedicate hours to play a game. With Waven, you can play in bursts of 15 minute increments and be able to go about your day without that harsh dedication. Because the game was pretty much built with mobile in mind, it comes with all the problems and criticisms of a mobile game. There is a mix of gotcha gaming in here with loot boxes, weird chat systems, bite-sized content, and more. Since the game is in early access, it goes without saying that there isn't much content or features in the game yet. Shoot, there isn't even a crafting system. Many of the game's environments will feel pretty barren or disappointingly small because of the lack of content, but to be fair, with time, more will be added. Obviously, once again, much like Dovis and Wakfu, if you don't like turn-based tactical combat, Waven is not going to be for you. I think at this point you can probably assume all of the Ankama games won't be for you if you don't like turn-based tactics. Lastly, Waven ultimately feels like a missed opportunity for Ankama. It could have been their 3D MMORPG to bring their IP into the modern era. Imagine if Waven was a true evolutionary game for the company, but instead it feels like a safe iteration into their IP. Not a bad game, just not a great one that truly sets itself apart. Maybe next time. And that is Waven, ladies and gents. A fine game that has some neat ideas. It just feels like Dofus and Wakfu all over again. But it's time to hear what you all think. Are you playing Waven or are you on the fence about it? Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to like the video to help me out in the algorithm. Subscribe to my channel to help support my content. Follow all my social medias in the description below if you'd like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.